So another schedule health metric is missed task. And this is a retrospective look at your performance against your baseline. So at the beginning of your project, you're setting a baseline to say, this is what our plan is. And now we're gonna be looking at how are you performing against that baseline. So a missed task is looking at your baseline finish that is on or before the status date. It could be today, or you can pick a date that was in the near past. Then you're also gonna say of the task, how many of those have a finish variance that is greater than zero? Now the finish variance is calculated by project using your baseline finish against what your current promise finish is. And it calculates the distance between that. It could either be a negative number or a positive number. If it's positive, it means it has slipped and how many days it has slipped. Your finish variance is based off of your baseline zero, not your baseline one or two or three. The missed task metric tells you if your schedule is trending behind. So the missed task metric is part of your earned value where you're looking at what your baseline plan was and then what your forecast plan is. So, and you're comparing them. And this is a retrospective measure of looking at that schedule performance. And why it's important is because it can serve as an early warning sign that your schedule is falling behind. So you wanna look at this just as an early indicator because this one is a little bit sensitive to where it can trigger that. The fields used for this, there's a couple different ones. You have your baseline finish, of course, and then your status date and your finish variance. The finish variance is looking at a comparison of your baseline finish to your promise finish. Project already calculates this for you, which is great, but you have to be making sure it's only looking at your baseline zero. Project has many multiple baselines, like baseline one, two, three, and four. It only calculates the variance based on your baseline zero. So you're going to look at that baseline zero and your finish variance. Now, how do you calculate this? You're looking at your baseline finish and you're going to count how many of those tasks have a baseline finish that is on or before the status date. And it has to have a finish variance greater than zero. Your finish variance isn't just calculated on just your completed task, which is that's where you would find your actual finish, but also on your forecasted finish. That's why you're looking at your finish variance. Then you're gonna divide that count by the tasks that have a baseline finish on or before the status date. The goal is for your metric to remain below 5%. Anything greater than five, it's an early indicator that your schedule is definitely falling behind. So a simple way to calculate this is we have 72 total tasks in our IMS. When we filter on the baseline finish, we're gonna be looking for a status date that is on or before December 8th. And we found 26 tasks fall into that category. The next one is that we wanna say how much of those 26 also have a finish variance greater than zero? So we have 11 tasks that have a finish variance that's greater than zero, and they have a baseline finish that's on or before our status date of December 8th. So then we calculate that by saying 11 divided by the 26 is a 0.42. That's 42%. That means we've missed almost half of our original dates. We're falling behind. So here's what it looks like in project. So in project, you're gonna have your finish column open, your baseline finish column open, and your finish variance. And these are the three that you need to look at. Now, we're also looking at what is our status date. So you could go up to project to find what your status date is. In this situation, it's NA, which means project is using your current date as that status date. So if you were to use your mark on track feature, it's using what is today's date. In my example, I said that we were using December 8th as a status date. So we're gonna filter on our baseline finish and go down to custom. And then you're gonna say is less than or equal to, and then you're just to type in the 12, eight and say, okay, this is how many tasks. Now you can manually go in and count how many tasks that is. And you can see that it's looking at both finished and incomplete task. Then you're gonna look at the finished variance. Now why this is important too is because you also need to be keeping your projected finish up to date on what it is. You can see that I have a couple things that are behind. So I need to update those first. This metric will look at whether you have finished or behind task. It doesn't matter, it doesn't exclude. It's looking at it all. And then we're gonna look at the finished variance and filter on anything that is not zero. Now, sometimes you might have some negative numbers in there if you've pulled some task in. So you would unclick those as well. We're looking at just anything that is greater than zero. So we unclicked zero and pressed okay. And if we counted this, we would count 11. So it's not looking at your summary. You don't count your summary. You're just counting the actual detailed task. So we have 11 here. If you had a much bigger project, so this one only had the 72 tasks. If you had a much bigger project, the easiest way to do this is let Excel calculate it for you. So now I'm going to take this data that I have and do the copy and paste over to Excel to get that information to do an easier count. And it's quick and simple. You can highlight all of these, 
but just copy and then we'll paste in Excel. And here's how I paste it in Excel. I just put those columns in there and I made sure that I did have the summary column checked and paste it in here as well. Because then what I did was I filtered on all the yeses and I deleted the data that was associated with that summary. Because again, we don't want Excel to calculate the summary tasks because they're summaries, they're not detailed tasks. So then I have a formula that just says, okay, how many total tasks do we have? It just counts everything in A. If it's populated, it counts it. Which, that does count summary tasks. So if we wanted to, we could count it on just do it where we did a count if on and I'll just change it right now. Count if on the summary one and say count if it's a yes or a no. I wanted a no because we don't want summaries. Okay, so we changed it. So out of the 72, we changed it to now there's only 58 that are actual detailed tasks. And we used our status date of 12-8. This helps Excel know what date are you tracking to. So then I do another count if formula. So I said a count if on that baseline finish column, and I said if it is less than or equal to that status date. And that's where we got the 26 from. Then I did the same thing on the count if for the finished variance, but this is an addition to, so it's a count ifs. So we're gonna do, okay, count how many of those 26, so we still have to get the 26 is the first thing, and then how many of those have a finished variance that's greater than zero. So that's the formula and that's where we got the 11. Then you just have your formula that says, okay, 11 divided by the 26, and that's where we got the 42%. Also, I wanted to show a quick trick that when you're in Excel and you copy over, you can see how these durations have the D with them or days. I had to remove those from the finished variance, otherwise it didn't count it. It wasn't saying that zero. So here is how I do that in Excel, is I copy just the column that I want to take the D away from, and I create two other columns. And I say, okay, the len function, and then I say the formula. It's gonna tell me how many characters, places are in that cell. So in this one, it's four, because you see there's the one, the two, the space, and the four. So you have the three, eight, so that's four spaces. And this one, it is three, and so forth. So that's what the len function is doing. Then I have my other formula in this next column that's saying, okay, take the left, so I want it to go left, and then you're telling it how many spaces. So I say, this is the column that you want it to do, or this is a cell and then there's four spaces, I want you to remove just one. So I just need it to remove the D. Now, if, you, if there wasn't a space, I would still just do the one. If I just said minus the two, it would still pull up the eight. You just wouldn't have the space after it. If I were to say minus the three, it would only come back with a three because you're telling it how many digits to go over. So that's what I did to remove the D. Then I would take this column, copy it, and go back over here and say paste special with just the value, but you'll see how my formula changed. It went to zero. So to fix this is still highlight everything in this column all the way down, but go back up and you see that little yield sign, then you're gonna say convert to a number, and then it just converted all those to a number, and then you can see that the formula calculates. It's back to 11. So that's the trick there. So if you were to copy and paste, that's the only thing of doing it in Excel is you're gonna have a D there, just like the start variance does, just like the duration does, but to get the D away for an easy calculation, you use that len function and the left function to get it away. So recap on the missed task metric, it's looking at your past performance against your baseline. And it's serving as an early warning that your schedule is falling behind. It's looking at that trend that you've already done and seeing, okay, how much of the product do you have left? How much of it have you already veered away? And you're using your status date, your finish variance, and your baseline finish. And then you're gonna calculate all that of how many have a baseline finish that is past your status date and how many of those have a finish variance that's greater than zero. Because again, the variance is looking at your finish and your baseline finish and comparing them how many days was that in between. This metric is an indicator. The closer you are to 5%, you're executing close to your original plan. But the higher this metric means you've missed a lot of your original dates and won't finish your project on time. Keep in mind that this metric is not looking at the variance number. So even if you missed a task by one day or even a week, it's triggered by this metric. So it's really sensitive. So it's not gonna tell you how far off you are from your plan, but it's just gonna tell you that you missed it. And if you missed it by one day, it's triggered by this metric. So keep that in mind.